the Go Berserk with Email podcast with Navy nuclear engineer turned email software developer, Troy Broussard. So calm. I'm pissed off, but I'm telling this because I am teaching you how to think differently and how to test differently. So patient. And Ben, that's put a half a million dollars into this company too, is being told that nobody can find the goddamn bug. So charitable. I'm going to start paying bounties every time somebody finds a bug. We're going to deduct $10 that week. So trusting. Do not assume that anything works. Assume that nothing works. And so sweet. It makes sugar taste just like salt. I want to play into the sexiness of marketing automation, but I also want to slap the complexity of it. The Go Berserk with Email podcast begins now. Yes, yes, y'all, it is time once again for another Go Berserk with email show with your man, the myth, the legend. Troy, what's up? In his own mind. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, man, good to be back for another one here. We're going to have some fun today. You know, we're going to talk about that glorious dashboard of metrics that entrepreneurs love to build and construct for themselves. Man, you said that that you're going to keep it tight for us because I know it, it can get crazy when we're building these dashboards. And I'm doing air quotes, people, dashboards. So what do you have for us, brother? I get the obsession around this. I really do. I'm a numbers guy. I'm a math guy. Uh, my background is all in kind of as a pilot observing a, a dashboard in front of me, a literal dashboard and checking the gauges and all of that. And so I get all of the metaphors that people draw and use to teach this concept. So here's what's going on. There's this dirty little secret about dashboards. And the reality is that until your business gets to a certain level, probably in the seven, eight figure level, that they're not nearly as needed and actually can divert you entirely from the mission. And I got to tell you that they mostly exist for software as a service companies to sell you a subscription and to get you kind of mentally masturbating on stuff that is actually hurting you because it's taking you out of what you should be doing in your business. It's kind of baffling you with bullshit with so many numbers to look at and so many different things that it confuses you on what you should be doing. All right. If all of those things were necessary for the task at hand, then I would tell you that uh, let's let's make a pilot analogy here. When you come in on instruments to a landing, you have a very simplified mission where all you're looking is staying on the glide scope and coming in at the right level and coming down and just following it in. And you've got that tunnel vision. That's all you're focused on. Yes, you have some other little ancillary stuff, but not really. Your tunnel vision on maintaining your altitude, maintaining your level of descent, making sure that you're coming down at the right descent level so that your altitude is going to reduce just in time to land you on that front edge of the landing strip. And so you may accelerate a little gas, you may pull back a little bit of gas in order to affect that descent. And that's it. That's all you're focused on. Hyper, hyper focused. So the problem with dashboards is that it distracts you into looking at all this other stuff. And just because you can doesn't mean you should. Unfortunately, that's what most people do. They get pulled off into all these different directions and it fragments their attention. They're looking at their leads per week. They're looking at their average cost per customer. They're looking at their cost of acquisition, looking at all of these different things, right? I'm not saying that all of those things aren't important. They are, but they're more important to a larger business that has multiple employees and multiple departments and managers and things like that. Typical kind of corporate style business. As an entrepreneur, there's probably only two metrics that you really need to be focused on. Because if you're running a single person business, a solo business, or if you're running just a small team, they're typically outsourcers, they're not typically employees. So even if you have a team of 25 people, if you have no employees, I'm going to say you're a solo entrepreneur, okay, for this categorization. The only way you get out of solo entrepreneur is if you're paying payroll taxes and have employees on salary and, and all of that, okay? But when you're in that solo entrepreneur category, it really truly is about you and your talent. Okay, the world does revolve around you. Even if you have a whole team doing things, the world 
is your oyster. It revolves around you. Jonathan, you have my permission to tell your whole team, check my heart rate because that's all that matters. Okay, there you go. You have my permission. Thank you. I literally have a little book that I've written that I haven't finished it, but it's called The Care and Handling of Your Captain because all, everybody calls me Captain Troy. It doesn't mean military captain. It's in reference to uh, an app platform. And so it's C apostrophe A-P-P apostrophe N captain <laughs> that Ben gave me that title. And so I didn't bestow it on myself. Ben made that up. And so everybody on the team, it's stuck. So they all call me Captain Troy. So I have literally a guide on the care and handling of your captain because there are certain things that I have that are rules. I have a bad neck as we're recording this. You can see on video, they won't hear it on the podcast, of course, but I'm sitting here with a, a heat pad on my neck because my neck is in pain and, and I deal with that a lot. So I don't like to be in front of the computer. And I do a lot of my work on the phone with just headphones on, Marco Polo, uh, barking out orders and instructions to the team. And so I have a procedure. And the procedure is you text me the message in Marco Polo. Uh, it has to be in the text form. And I respond in audio. It's your problem to deal with how fast I talk or if I'm in the car and the, the conditions or whatever. That's your problem. You got to deal with that. And don't expect me to type because I'm going to do it the fastest, easiest way possible for me. And I'm also going to consume it in the way that's easiest for me. Don't send me in rambling audio. I don't have time for that. I'm running five companies. I'm probably responding to you while I'm doing something else on another call or something. And I can see the text message and I can respond to that or I can formulate my response really easily because it doesn't interrupt. It can be parallel processed. A audio or video is sequential and it stops me and wastes my time. So I have a whole procedure of all of that. So understanding that as a solo entrepreneur, the business really does revolve around you, then the two metrics are really simple, okay? And they're really two sides of the same coin, but they will shape and positively warp your mindset around something that most people don't do. What I'm talking about is getting to a point where you really understand what your average income per hour worked is. Now, people like to overcomplicate the hell out of this. There's no need to. It's really simple. Go to your bank account is where I like to look because it's the bottom of the barrel. Everything simplifies down to your bank account. You can just look at an account statement and divide up, you know, sum up all of your deposits and that's your monthly income. Really simple. So now you've got your income side of things. Then what you need to track, and this is the problem, okay? It's not that it's hard. It's actually trivial to do, but everybody screws it up because they let their ego get in the way. You must set your ego aside and earnestly and sincerely track the hours that you're spending in front of the computer in your air quote version of work. work. What we'll find is, yeah, work. <laughs> I'm, I'm working, honey. I'm working. Leave me alone. I'm working. Yeah, right. On the TikTok. <laughs> on tic, working on TikTok. Working on that fantasy football league. You know, seriously, though, you have to articulately track the hours that you work. And then you simply divide those two numbers. So you divide your income by the number of hours worked in a month and you come to an average rate. That is your average income. That is what your hourly rate is. You may be billing 200 an hour, but you're spending so much unprotective time working that you're effectively only earning $14 an hour or $43 an hour or whatever. And I know we can't see Winnie Jonathan on video because he's making these faces at me like, huh? 14? Uh, don't give my secret. think they work for 50 <laughs> bucks an hour. They, oh, I make, I easily average 50. And then you do the math. $50 an hour is 200000 a year, but most people are not working that, right? So that's the first thing. That's the average income. And that's what people like to track because that's what people mostly talk about. But I'm going to bend your mind here a little bit and tell you one other metric that is similar, but it's actually easier to track and it's just as important. And this one, you know, you get to float your ego a little bit. This one, you get to pat yourself on the back and, you know, fluff your ego up a little bit. On this one, it is your highest and best use rate, highest and best use. And I'll give you an example. So a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I do options trading, as you know, and I, I only spend about an hour or two a week on it. And 
it's a very minor amount of time, yet it makes me a lot of money. And so a couple of weeks ago, I had my best week ever. I closed out the year, my best week at the end, it was the end of December of last year, was like 8,000 in, in a week for two hours of my time. So my highest and best use of my time was $4,000 an hour. That was my highest and best use rate that I established in December. Well, in February, I hit 12,000 in a single week, $12,341 on options in a week. And it still took me only two hours of my time. So now I reset my bar, I reset my achievement goal, I reset my target, and now that target is 6,000 an hour. That's my new target. So is everything I do worth $6,000 an hour in my income? No, it's not, it's not worth that. But that is my highest and best use of my time. And so when you plot those two things and track your average hourly rate and your highest and best use rate, it gives you two targets to be focused on. The hourly rate tells you that you're wasting a lot of time doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. And so you want to start moving that up. And as you move it up and you realize, hey, I've got that average rate at 120 an hour. Well, then when you find yourself doing work, that is something you could pay somebody $25 an hour and you're doing it. That's how you solve that equation. That's how you begin to cut stuff off of your plate and focus on what matters, okay? Because now you have that baseline of your hourly average. So that's important. But it's also important to have that stretch goal of my highest and best use. For a lot of people, that highest and best use might be a speaking gig. They might get paid $2,000 for a speaking gig. And that is $2,000 per hour. They do an hour speech and they get that 2,000. But is it really? In that case, I would say, is it really? It's not, is it? You gotta prepare for the speech, you gotta travel, you've got to do all the little things that you do. And that one hour speech might end up being eight or 10 or 12 hours of work, right? Easy. And could interrupt two days worth of the business from travel time as well. So I wouldn't use that as a great example, but having that stretch goal, as well as having the average goal, those two metrics are really what most serial and solo entrepreneurs should be focusing on because it's about improving the value of their time, which equates to that lovely time freedom continuum that we're constantly focusing on. How can we earn more and work less? Well, you do that by focusing on these two metrics. And just to tease people a little bit, John, I'm going to go even further. And next episode, we're going to go down to just one. So I want to start with this because it's a good level set. Uh, but next week, I'm going to give you one more that is proven in the industry. This is not something I invented. This is a proven methodology and not enough people talk about it. We're too worried about being these squirrels chasing all the latest and greatest tactics and jumping around. And we love our little 48 metric dashboards and all that other horse shit. Next week, I'm going to blow that all out of proportion. We're just going to talk about one thing. No, oh, I, I got a new goal. I got to get to $6,150 an hour <laughs> to match Troy. There you go, man. I'm working towards 10000 an hour. That's my goal. Let's go. Well, that is a wrap for Go Berserk with the email show. Thank you for tuning in and we will be back in your earbuds next time. To get a free Berserker Mail test drive with no credit card required, go to startmytestdrive.com. From there, you can play around inside the platform without pressure, load up emails and campaigns to see how simple the interface is, and get comfy with everything before deciding to join. That's startmytestdrive.com. This is the podcastfactory.com.